And he has signed this lad straight out of the juniors. Who is he? Josh Tarling. Now, from Wales. Super, super strong rider. Um, a junior. So, really, really strong. And we see here, this is Otley in 2021. Some of the only real stream braces I can find are actually in the UK crit scene. And he's in that sort of purple, pink, blue kit. Um, and he's absolutely flying the big, the man. He is a big man. Apparently, he's like 88 kids. I don't know if that's right. That's what it says on pro cycling stats. But he is a big, a big boy. And he is incredibly strong now. His results this year, like he's won every TT, UCI TT he's done so far, won three stages in like pretty big races um, uh, and also won a road race as well in Salon Trofeo. So you can see here he managed to make the big split, which was with Matt Gibson um, as well as Rob Scott, I think it is, and him. So basically all three, like all two super, like them two are both really strong crit racers um in the uk and you can see here that they've actually got a decent circuit so josh tarling here is in a bit of a dis uh, disadvantage compared to them too the finish of otley is actually really downhill and like not suitable for junior gears because obviously this is only like first year junior so um they've got a massive gap they're like there's no way they're gonna get caught but yeah not an ideal thing so the question is like why have any of signed him straight out of juniors well he's been mopping up in a lot of junior races he's really really strong um, he came second in the men's junior individual time trial last year as a first year junior, which is pretty impressive. He's also in the break um, in the world road race as well. Be interesting to see how he does this year in the road championships. We can see position is really, really nice. Um, looks super strong and fluid through the pedal stroke. Um, his time trial position is also bonkers. He's actually bad me by like a minute on a 10 mile TT. So, you know, definitely, definitely worthy of signing video. So he bins Charlie Carbon Cycle by a minute and a 10 mile TT. But um, maybe it might have been two. It was an embarrassingly uh, amount of time I lost the, to the ladder. I think he was like 17 at the time. But anyway, you know, he is, he is a big boy. But yeah, super strong time trialist. So I think it'll be interesting to see what Ineos do. They've obviously signed Carlos Rodriguez before straight out of the juniors as well. So they know what they're doing in that respect. Um, And yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the man can deliver, where his strong strengths are. I mean, you'd guess from what he is good at now, time trialing mainly, um, but also spring classics as well. Like, Kerner Brussels Kerner Juniors this year he didn't do unbelievably like 41st Paris Bay Juniors um 20th like nothing that strikes out like wow they're going to be a really strong cl classics rider however if you've got the, my view on these races is if you've got the watts you've got the watts do you know what I mean like you know he's obviously doing you know 450 for 20 maybe more like he's definitely going to be strong enough to do well in the classics um in reality so yeah that's basically why i think he's going to be good in the future obviously like circuit racing doesn't exist in the pros so he won't be doing any of that um but yeah i think those are probably the, the key strengths that he has um he's also done to be fair a fair few like non-use junior races which he's done well in um he didn't win the the British Junior National TT Champs, so oh sorry, he didn't win the Road Champs, but I'm pretty sure he won um the TT Champs actually. The Road Champs was won by Max Walker, um but yeah he's yeah super strong. And then this year he also finished like third in the um National TT uh Crit Champs, which I will show in a minute. Third in Junior Sickle Classic, uh won the Junior Tour of the Northwest in the UK. Did win the the individual TT um, champs in the UK, which I thought he did, and also some decent other results um, at the Tour Series, which is like a really hard crit racing circuit in the UK. He also got two top 10s there as well, which is very, very strong. Junior Tour, he also came uh, second overall um, of the Isle of Man. Um, so yeah, he actually been Ben Wiggins by a minute and 16 in the Junior Individual time trial, you can see here that the sprint is not really suiting the big man. He, um, he has zero chance of competing, unfortunately, um, with Matt Gibson, but does manage to hold off for third. Matt Gibson's now running Pro Conti um, in for human powered health, so not someone bad to lose to, but again, you can just see the gearing uh, was not optimal at all. So, anyway, now we're going to hop over to the National Crit Champs which is now so you can see well, this is basically similar footage to sam watson but you can see like from early on the break goes basically from the gun because no pins boy hoons himself into the fence and that creates a split but josh Charling in this i think is interesting to see in both these crits that actually his sprint is maybe not the best thing in the world um and i think that's an interesting point um josh Charling actually misses out on this move um but then managed to bridge across and i think it goes to show maybe he is more of a diesel engine maybe he's more He's not necessarily like, you know, someone like Mads Pedersen, who's really strong time trialist, but and good sprinter like Cancellara, obviously, back in the day. And maybe actually he's more of just a pure diesel engine. You can see him. He's on the right hand side of the road here in the Wales Racing Academy kit. So the red kit is what you're looking out for. The huge man in the red kit still on his 
giant TCR on rim breaks, which is what we love to see. Um, but yeah, he doesn't panic too much here. And like, he actually, I guess, realizes that, but yeah, the break's gone, but it's gone straight away and he's going to come back. You can see him on the front stringing it out. Um, and then Sam Watson attacks here and Josh Tarling's like, yeah, that looks like a good wheel to go on. And you can see out this corner, he does a big shift to get across this gap. Josh Tarling is doing a lot of what's probably um, to string this out. You can see everyone behind. Like These riders are all pretty decent, like under 20, under 23 squad for Adja Dezer, um, barring development team, other FDJ people. Like They're not sort of donkeys um, who he's binning. Um, so again, out this corner, look how strong our looks. Absolutely disgusting if you're 25 wheels back. Um, and Josh Tarling, I think, and you could maybe say he does too much work in closing this down, but I think he sort of has to. And out this corner actually is one of the key things. You'll see him goes around the corner and absolutely hits it out of there. Sam Watson does again. And this is actually where one of the big splits happens, to be honest. Like they keep drilling this. Um, and um, I'm pretty sure Lewis Askey just lets the wheel go eventually. And the split decide. then they basically the split happens. But you can see here, very disgustingly strung out and that is basically Josh Tarling because he's chasing down Sam Watson and he doesn't even care that he has people on his wheel he's like it is what it is I got big watts I'm gonna close you down and everyone else is sort of just crying back um but yeah he does look huge doesn't he like he looks significantly bigger than all the other riders maybe he's sort of like a Magnus Backstead sort of style of rider um but you can see it does actually end up getting brought back and then he decides it's time to go again with Sam Watson as well and um I think it's Josh Gidding, someone said in that previous commentary, and you can see the Wells Racing Academy boys blocking behind. Um, poor lad has to ride a Dolan, <laughs> RIP. Um, but yeah, this is the Matt Bostock's on the front, who again, like super strong crit rider, like I said before. Um, and Josh Tarling is like drilling this back, and he literally does it single handedly. He doesn't, he sort of looks back here, um, but he doesn't really flick his elbow. He just goes, It is what it is. I have to close it because I am strong. And I think that obviously like won't be happening in the pros as much he's not just going to be closing gaps left right and center but i think you can definitely show that he's going to be a really really strong rider um in the future interesting to see how versatile he is if he is just an absolute tank on the flat like an ian standard type bloke or if he is um can climb or can sprint or can do some other things here but you can see again out this corner he actually does flick his elbow let sam watson you know, come through, um, and they do actually close down this gap. Sam Watson does a big, big, big turn to get across here. Um, but Josh Tarling actually did a lot of attacking in the final kilometers of this race, perhaps showing that he's not as confident in the time trialing um, as you thought he might be. Uh, sorry, in the sprint as you thought he might be. Um, and again, I think that just goes to show maybe not a pure classics man, maybe more of a diesel, uh, as I previously said. Um, but he does end up actually closing this gap. It seems to take him a little bit longer than Sam Watson, so not quite sure. Probably because he's getting zero draft off uh, Sam Watson because he's an absolute huge bloke in comparison. But coming into the final lap, you can see Josh Tarling puts in this cheeky last dig attack, but unfortunately for him, everyone closes it down. It's quite hard to... I think the thing is, when it's three, it's either really easy to get away because you attack, the other person looks at them, or there's one bloke who's just like, I don't care, there's only one guy on my wheel, like, there's not much draft, I'll just get it back, um, and also, you know, there's only one person attacking, so it can sort of work either way, but it seems in this sense that actually, it did not work in his favour, um, and instead, Sam Watson, basically, and Matt Bostock, but mainly Matt Bostock, brought him back, coming into the final sprint, it's not looking good, to be honest, this is their left-hand corner, then they have a right-hand corner, and then it's the hairpin coming up here, um, so... Sorry, this is actually just a happen. You can see here he's playing games, but I guess the thing is he knows, like, you know, he's already wasted all his bullets, so it is what it is, um, and unfortunately, he's going to lose the sprint to Matt Bostock. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video about Josh Tarring. Hope this gives you a little bit more context about who the man is, um, and we will see you in the next one.